Thanks, Mark. Uh, thank you guys for uh, for attending today. Uh, hopefully everybody can, can you see my screen still? Okay, great. I saw the recording button pop up and so I wasn't sure I wanted to make sure we're good. Uh, so my name is Lindsay Sneckenberger and I uh, work at the Tennessee Valley Authority or TBA. Um, I work in the financial services organization there and I have what I think is a super fun job. Uh, I have the opportunity to work with students such as yourselves. I oversee our recruiting events and intern program for the financial services and IT organization, as well as two different types of, de of leadership and development programs for our employees, a financial services university, which is uh, open to interns all the way up to vice presidents. And it's a, a, a really cool resource to be able to develop your kind of personal and professional skills and financial services leadership university, which is an, a really neat uh, program. We just launched last year um, designed to really help grow and develop our leaders so they can be the best leaders for our employees possible. So today uh, I have the pleasure of talking to you all about social media uh, and why it's important uh, and how you can use it. So to start us off, uh, I'm going to have us look at this number. So 92%. So 92%, what that relates to is 92% of recruiters use social media in the recruiting process. So uh, these recruiters use social media primarily in two different ways. So attracting talent and seeking talent is, is one way, and then reviewing potential talent for consideration for roles. And when we talk about social media being used this way, the main social media platform used by recruiters by far is LinkedIn. So what is LinkedIn? You all have probably heard of LinkedIn, but in case you haven't, what is it and, and should you really care about it? So LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network on the internet. You can use LinkedIn to find the right job or internship, connect and strengthen your professional relationships, and uh, learn the skills you'll need to succeed in your career. So if you're a job seeker or you want to build some professional relationships, LinkedIn can be a great tool for you. So as the goal of most college students, uh, such as yourself, uh, is to get a job, let's look at some of the stories that they tell uh, on LinkedIn as it relates to hiring specifically. So looking at uh, this, we have uh, at the top number of job applications submitted on LinkedIn monthly, 100 billion. A number of companies that use LinkedIn to recruit, 20,000. A number of active job postings on LinkedIn, 20 million. So again, if you're a job seeker, this, this is the place to be. Uh, we've already talked about the percentage of recruiters that use LinkedIn to vet candidates. And then percentage of recruiters that only use LinkedIn uh, for, for social, social media outreach, 48%. Um, so almost half. So that's, those are some pretty pretty big numbers there. So how can you as a student, as a potential uh, job seeker use it? So really two primary ways I see it impacting uh, the college student population. So uh, LinkedIn can be used largely for networking and then for, for job seeking. So many of you all probably already have a LinkedIn account, uh, but if you don't, here's a couple of tips on really how to get started and where to, where to go first. Because I know I've had that, that comment from some of my interns, like, well, maybe I have one, but it, it just has my name. You know, I'm not really quite sure uh, where to start to, to build out my, my profile. So first, choose a professional photo. So uh, you have that option whenever you create an account or whenever you update your account. So you want to make a good impression for anybody that views your profile. And a big part of that could be the picture that you choose. Um, so you should really opt for a professional looking headshot rather than a casual shot. It doesn't need to be you going to a photography studio and getting a professional headshot, but just making sure you're getting a look professional. Uh, you can clearly you know, see your face. The lighting's fine uh, for your LinkedIn profile picture. Uh, second, write a good profile summary. So uh, your LinkedIn profile summary is a chance for you to put that best foot forward, especially if you're interested in, in new job opportunities. Um, LinkedIn has a character limit for this section, uh, so you want to make the most of it. So focus on um, short, clear bullets or sentences so the reader doesn't lose interest or get lost uh, if you have a, a, a more lengthy paragraph. 
Uh, third, improve and tweak your profile. So in addition uh, to your summary, your LinkedIn profile can really serve, honestly, as your online resume. Uh, it'll contain your experience, uh, education, your skills, endorsements, recommendations, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and it helps you get found. That's one of the most important things about it because it can contain searchable keywords uh, in the information that you post about yourself. So the content that you put in there is really important. And we're going to talk about kind of searchable words here in a minute. And then request LinkedIn recommendations. So recommendations are another great way to make your LinkedIn profile stand out. So uh, positive recommendations written by previous employers, clients, colleagues can show a hiring manager what kind of employee you are and what your strengths are. So you have the ability to request recommendation from some of your LinkedIn connections. So after you've set up a, a really killer LinkedIn account, let's talk about first using it for networking purposes. So your professional network can really help you find uh, a job and unlock new opportunities. I really can't stress that enough. So it's important that you build and foster your professional relationships. So um, there's been an increase of 55% in conversations among connections uh, on LinkedIn over the past year. And we really expect that to continue, especially in this virtual environment, as people focus on kind of reconnecting and engaging people uh, that are in their existing network. So if your network is filled with people that you know personally, it's real and it's usable. And every connection has the potential to impact your professional life positively, uh, whether it's a job recommendation or introducing you or even maybe giving you career advice. So how can you build your, your LinkedIn network? First, connect with people that you know on LinkedIn. Uh, so make sure you're connected with your fam family, your friends, your colleagues, peers in your class. These are the folks that are going to know you the best and be able to speak to your work ethic and really know you as an individual. So an easy way to do that is going to the people you may know feature on your My Network tab in LinkedIn. And it's an easy way to really connect with people that maybe you went to the same school with, that have a similar type of job or interest or even based in the same city. Uh, secondly, reconnecting with contacts that you may have lost uh, touch with. And I do this all the time. I've been out of school for, for quite a while at this point. Uh, reaching out to people that you haven't spoken to in a while might feel a little uncomfortable at first, but there's there's some easy ways to, to break the ice. So consider kind of reaching out. Uh, maybe somebody you went to high school with or somebody that transferred schools or, or that you worked at a previous uh, job with. Reaching out on LinkedIn saying, hey, it's been a while since we spoke. Hope you're doing well, you know, especially given the circumstances or even engaging with some of the content, liking something that they posted um, or commenting just to show your support. So um, really getting into the habit of having that consistent communication in a genuine way uh, can be really beneficial in the long run when it comes to networking and networking on a social platform like this. Third, share your insights and stories by posting. So a great way to network on LinkedIn is by sharing some experience and ideas. So you can do that in a couple of different ways. Um, I don't draft a lot of original content necessarily myself, but what I would do is reshare maybe a connections post uh, with, with one or two of the key takeaways that you took from that. If you are more creative, uh, like I am not, uh, hosting a short video interview with a colleague or something like that and posting that on your page. So trying to post on a regular basis, whether, again, that's sharing or posting your original com um, comments and including kind of relevant hashtags on your content, that will help extend uh, your reach past just your first three connections, which, again, can kind of get you connected to more folks, which increases uh, job opportunities. And then finally, a good benefit uh, through through uh, networking on LinkedIn is leveraging your network, especially for help when needed. So um, when you connect with folks you know on LinkedIn, uh, you'll not only see more relevant conversations in your feed, but you'll also have visibility into your connections, professional networks that you may not have known about. So you may, uh, for example, find that your your uh, roommate's sister, uh, you know, is is um, a director in HR at a company that you've got some interest with. And you might be able to, to use that and say, hey, would you mind introducing us through LinkedIn uh, and establishing a connection that way? So lots of different ways to, to kind of think about this as it relates to uh, networking. So when we turn to how we use LinkedIn for recruiting and how that's work, how that works, I wanted to spend just a few minutes kind of hitting the highlights of how recruiters and companies, first of all, use LinkedIn to recruit, because that's something kind of important uh, for you to have in the back of your mind, especially as you build in um, and build out your, your LinkedIn profile. So, um, so first, uh, as we've seen that the stats slide earlier, 
recruiters actively post a ton of jobs on LinkedIn. Um, it, it, by posting a job directly on LinkedIn, oftentimes applicants can directly apply just through the site itself, which is honestly an easy button for a lot of recruiters. So it's, it's definitely a heavily used site for that. Uh, recruiters also find applicants by using their networks. So usually as a recruiter, uh, you can elicit candidate recommendations for a particular job opening because they have uh, additional access to, to particular uh, LinkedIn functions. So they use it in that way as well. They use it in touch. They use it to stay in touch with former um, really valued and trusted colleagues for future employment opportunities. So you never want to lose uh, lose contact or uh, lose touch with somebody that you've worked with successfully in the past. Um, and then recruiters actively search for keywords uh, for, for candidates that they're looking for. So that, that keywords kind of comes into play again. So they can narrow down uh, their search by kind of cross-referencing the requirements that they're looking, looking for with qualifications listed in profiles. Um, so that's why, you know, having a good kind of keyword rich, uh, well-developed profile can be really beneficial if you kind of landing on the radar of some of these recruiters. And then finally, uh, uh, often recruiters will use a LinkedIn in, uh, in mail, which is kind of their internal email system to reach out to candidates for interest on job posting. So, so that's a little bit about if you're in the mind of a recruiter, that's how they're going to be using it. So again, it's very important for, for you all to kind of think about um, as you build out your, your profile. So knowing how they use uh, LinkedIn as far as hiring companies, how does this impact you? So first, as I've mentioned a few times, use keywords as you're building out your profile. So in order for a recruiter to find you, you have to have the proper search terms in your profile. So when doing that, you've got to think about the keywords that maybe a recruiter would use when looking for their ideal candidate. So for example, if I was looking to hire, um, since I'm in financial services, a director of finance, you know, I might be looking for keywords around budgets, uh, stocks of Microsoft Excel or the GAAP, something like that. Um, but keywords can be pretty picky. Uh, if a recruiter is looking for, say, a project manager and your profile says project management, it, it's not going to find you. Um, so that that's that seems very particular, but just kind of keep that in mind. So uh, you may kind of experiment, honestly, with some of the types of keywords that you use and make sure you're using a variety of, of different ones to, to land you on the radar of the right person. Second, using descriptive titles. So using a title that's more descriptive rather than, say, founder or owner uh, is also important. Uh, job descriptions are collapsed on mobile devices on LinkedIn, so only the titles can be visible. So if I'm a recruiter and I'm looking for you on my phone, I'm not going to see the, the big content that I would see if I pulled you up on my, my desktop computer. Um, so you don't want to get passed over for consideration because your title is too vague. So I know for, for me uh, personally, I've gone in and, and used my summary and my title to really talk about more about the function that I do versus the actual title of the role that I have. So depending on your search circumstance or situation, that may be something that you want to consider. Um, third, have at least three recommendations. So at the very least, those should come from folks that you work for or you work with. So many employers don't give a lot of stock in that as far as endorsements. I, to be frank with you, I get kind of endorsements all the time from people that I barely know. So, so it's, it's not the most heavily weighted things, but if you have recommendations, especially from folks that you worked with, especially former bosses or current bosses, that's really going to be a, a plus. And be active, number four there. So check your LinkedIn, comment on things, um, share articles or posts, create your own content, like I said before, if you're creative like that. It's just going to increase kind of the visibility, how frequently you're popping up on, on uh, your connections profile. And then last there. I've got it all caps, check your account. So if so many recruiters are using email exclusively to reach out, uh, to either follow you or reach out for a, a job alert or interest in an opportunity, if you're not frequently uh, checking your account or if you don't have those alerts set up to pop up on your phone, um, you may miss that opportunity because they're not gonna, they're not gonna stick around for a while. Finally, to kind of wrap up the conversation, because I know we wanted lots of time for, for Q&A here, um, just as important uh, as what to do on social media, and maybe even more important to know kind of what to avoid and what not to do. So uh, first, negative posts. Um, if you're posting negatively really about anything, just be pretty mindful of that. Um, that could be an, a potential employer's first impression of you, and that could not go over super great. So this could be a bad taste in the mouth of the employers. Um, 
you know, them calling into question, is this an isolated kind of negative post or is this person generally negative in nature? And would I want that attitude or mindset on my team or my company? Second, bashing former or current em employers. So this should pretty much go without uh, saying, but ever, ever bash a current or, or former employer on social media uh, or, or really at all. Um, as we've seen, especially lately, that can live forever. You know, you can find things on social media, on the internet for literally forever, I feel like at this point, and people can find it. Um, so if you speak poorly about your current or former employer, potential employers may say, well, are they going to do that same thing to me if I were to hire them? Um, next item, unprofessional photos or memes. So keep it clean. Uh, if you can do a cake stand, good for you and your flexibility, but I don't need to see that probably on LinkedIn. So your profile pic, as I said, would be uh, professional. So uh, profile pic or pics that you would post on private social media pages uh, may look different than the ones that you choose to post on LinkedIn. Political opinions, and we are uh, hot and heavy with a lot of political opinions these days. I would just recommend probably not to do it on LinkedIn. Um, everybody's entitled to your own opinion, uh, but if you did share it, maybe don't share it on LinkedIn. Uh, do it in, uh, uh, with private accounts, uh, with close friends only. Uh, things get shared and screenshotted, uh, and, and they can they can come out. So you, you, you want to try to keep it at maybe as neutral as possible there. And then uh, sanity, just keep it classy, keep it clean. Uh, again, this, this could be a first impression um, that you make on a lot of recruiters, potential employers. So you don't want something like that to come back and, and haunt you or impact um, the way that they, they can look at you or consider you for a community. So with that, uh, I have uh, I tried to keep it to, uh, to, to a short and sweet kind of presentation again. So there's plenty of time uh, for uh, any questions uh, that you all may have. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna stop my screen share and kind of open it up to uh, the folks in the team today. What do you think the best way to get into a habit of posting on LinkedIn is so that you have a presence? Yeah, I think that's a that's a great, great question. So, and this may seem uh, super uh, simple and, and kind of boring, but even putting reminders um, on your on your calendar, on your phone. I have, I am so nerdy. I have reminders literally for everything uh, on my Apple phone from, from birthdays to, you know, make sure my kids are brushing their teeth to check this account, you know, that type of thing. So, um, so I definitely understand that it, it may not be the most popular platform uh, for, for students. Um, but I think if you put a reminder, hey, maybe weekly, I'm going to get on, I'm going to check, I'm going to, you know, take, say, five minutes to scroll through my feed, making sure if I see something I like commenting, sharing, um, you know, giving it a thumbs up, uh, that type of thing um, could just keep it, uh, you know, easily uh, kind of on the radar. Hi, Lindsay. My name's Luke. Um, is hey, there Luke. something different you think that people looking for an entry job should be doing versus somebody that has a lot of experience? As far as it relates to LinkedIn, so um, I'll tell you, you know, folks that are looking for entry level jobs, from what I've seen, that's one of the first things I do is go look to go look at LinkedIn. So I think anything you can do at this phase of your career, where you are more active, where you're showing um, maybe certificates you've completed, that type of thing, uh, I think is going to kind of, in my opinion put you a, a step above your, your colleagues, especially with, with entry level folks. Um, with put folks that are a bit more seasoned in their career, um, or maybe not really looking to, to, to job search, maybe their activity is, is a bit less. Um, but I think, um, especially with maybe, um, not first time job seekers, but maybe new college grads, that type of thing. Um, that's really the opportunity for, especially if you don't have a lot of experience, you know, building it out and kind of showcasing the skills that you do have. Uh, because oftentimes, I think some of the questions that I talk to a lot of my interns and students about are, well, crap, Lindsay, I don't, I don't 
have any accounting experience? You know, how am I going to get noticed with just my resume only um, to get in the yes stack? So if if you have maybe a, a lack of experience in the field that you're going into, but I, I'm able to go and pull your LinkedIn profile and I'm seeing, you know, hey, you know, you attended this LinkedIn class, you're, you're sharing posts, you're active, I can tell that you're engaged. Then suddenly I'm like, well, what? Luke may not have any experience in accounting, but he, he's engaged. I think he's the type of, of candidate that we would value here at TVA. So that's going to, I think, help boost you with consideration. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'll come up with good questions today. <laughs> so you, you made me think about a, a question um, as well about uh, reaching out to people that maybe you haven't talked to in a while. And I, one of the things I have a hard time with is figuring out how to reconnect with somebody because I'm naturally I'm an introvert and, and I it's conversation starting it can be awkward and I'm always afraid they're going to think that like I'm reaching out to get them to like join my pyramid scheme or something like why well, I haven't heard <laughs> from this person in 10 years and now they want to talk about it works or Tupperware or whatever so like how how do I guess like what's your best like icebreaker to like get reacquainted with somebody how, how would you suggest going about that yeah that's a great question and and i and and i i hear you sometimes i feel like if i if i reach out to, to folks i haven't talked to in a while you know they're gonna think i'm hitting them up for a job or, or or something you know suspicious like that when it's really just to kind of kind of reconnect so you know the, i think the benefit of things like linkedin is that if you have somebody that you haven't talked to in a while you can you can easily go to their profile and kind of scroll through their feed and see some of the things that they're commenting on that could potentially kind of lead as a segue into a conversation. Yeah, you know, um, hey, Alex, you know, I haven't talked to you in a while. I saw that you attended this conference, you know, uh, well, virtual conference <laughs> at this point, right? Uh, this virtual conference, I, I've got a lot of interest in that area. would love to, to connect and, and get your feedback, you know, something like that. So trying to find something maybe on their feed uh, that doesn't make you look like, you know, a creepy stalker, but it looks like somebody that, that you're interested in. So you've got more of a, a legitimate reason for reaching out versus it just being in the cold call to you want to buy my Tupperware kind of thing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You know, what's the one other thing that, that you just made me think of too, is that I, I'm always super aware on LinkedIn that it lets people know when someone is looking at your profile. Like, even if you're already connected, like it'll say like, you know, like John Smith looked at your profile. Um, and so if I, you know, like it's one of those, just be aware, like if you go to um, scroll through someone's feed to look for some like connection point, you're already making the connection point because they're going to see that you pulled up their profile. So just be ready to find something and talk about it, to, to, you know, instead of being the background. And I viewer. I think there are certain settings, uh, and I could be wrong on this, the people on LinkedIn are you know, hopefully they won't see this and say, Lindsay, you're, you're speaking correctly. But um, I think there are certain settings uh, that you can you can um, uh, do whenever you're, you're either setting up your profile or, or, or adjusting or editing it um, that that do make that private. Um, I know sometimes it's advanced membership or if you have the, the, the like LinkedIn premium um, uh, kind of paid services, um, the um, Kind of bad part of that is 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 if you elect that option you also don't get to see who's looking at yours so it's kind of either they get to see that you're looking at at, at them and you get to see who's looking at you or nobody sees you but you also don't see what anybody else is, is looking at so i know that's kind of how frankly how mine is set up um so i i may know that i had five UTC students or, or five folks in this industry look at my profile, but it will not show me the names and, and vice versa. So, um, so I think that, <laughs> I think that's still a thing, but, uh, but I don't know right offhand how, how to tell you to go do it, unfortunately. And Lindsay, another question, is there a way to contact employers outside of job postings? Just to say, hey, I'm so and so. I'm interested in your company. You know, is there an etiquette for that? Um, so I think it's a it's a bit more challenging these days than than it would 
have been, say, 15 years ago, I think, uh, say 15, 20 years ago, it might be completely appropriate for you to show up at an employer, uh, you know, place of work and say, hey, you know, I, I'm Luke, I'm, I'm interested in your company, can I drop off a resume or is there a manager I can speak to? And that might be totally appropriate, but that was, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, I think what we're seeing more of now is, I know, for example, CDA has set up um, something that we're calling kind of a talent network. And I know you know uh, several other prominent employers in the Chattanooga area have something similar, where even if you don't have necessarily um, interest in any of the currently posted jobs, uh, you can go and just submit your resume and say, hey, I'm interested in uh, roles with your company. Um, and, and really how that works is, is they will be able to um, I have your resume kind of in their system uh, as, as having interest in roles. And if there's things that match your profile or your qualifications or your interests, um, then you would already be in their systems for recruiters to potentially reach out to and say, hey, Luke, uh, this job uh, we have on the board, this may be of interest to you, you may want to consider applying. Um, so that's typically, I feel like what I've seen a bit more of in, in recent years, uh, just with everything being uh, more virtual. Um, I know with most places, there's not a, a, um, outside of what I'm describing, there's not necessarily a, a contact number. Uh, sometimes there might be uh, that you might reach a, kind of a general HR uh, type of a number. But, um, you know, when you think about, for example, a company like TDA that has 10,000 employees, you know, um, calling a, a general kind of hotline is, is probably not going to get you uh, uh speaking to a hiring manager necessarily. So sometimes these talent networks are the, are the best way to, to go. Again, you're already kind of in their system at that point, and hopefully we'll get auto notifications of things that you might be qualified for. Yeah. I'll, I'll just throw out there, we had a, another session earlier about um, networking through informational interviews. Um, so uh, that recording of that session will be available on our website by next week. So you can go in and kind of see, but um, LinkedIn is a great way to get like that initial connection point made and then request an informational interview because at, at worst they'll say no, but it just gives you this opportunity to say like, I'm interested in working in your field. I'm interested in your organization. I know that you don't have any jobs open now, but I'm interested in making a connection and learning more so that I can be a competitive candidate later and kind of show that level of interest. Uh, that then can turn into a successful job search at, at a later point. So that would be something worth researching for you. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with that, Mark. I know I have um, quite frequently students, um, UTC is actually really good about it, UTC students are reaching out to me through LinkedIn, connecting or sending me a message and saying, hey, would love to know more about your company, would love to know more about your internship opportunities. Um, can you, do you have a few minutes to, to to talk. And, um, you know, as long as I've got the, the availability, I'm happy to talk to students. I think probably most contacts, if you know who to contact at the company, I think most contacts would be would be happy to sit and, and chat with you about the opportunities. And I'll be honest with you, those those students that are proactive like that, which I think, you know, is, which is what Mark is saying, um, those, those are the ones that I'm saying, hey, they have real interest in my company. They have real interest in coming on board at some point. I'm going to keep them in the back of, uh, of my mind. And then, again, I'm already connected to them at that point on LinkedIn, so I can easily reach out if we have an opportunity that comes up that they may be interested in. Any other questions? So do you do most of you all have LinkedIn accounts already set up now? <laughs> I can only see Luke and he's shaking his head. <laughs> I have one, but it's not flushed out at all. I haven't really touched it. But it's been sitting there for years because my mom wanted me to get one forever ago when it came out and was like, this should be very important. And I was like, okay. So I made one. <laughs> I didn't do anything with it because I was just a child. Yeah, I think yeah, I as, 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 I'm sorry, I, I have one as well, kind of the same situation. I've had one for a while, but just been sitting there and never really use it for anything. So I don't know if you can hear me. I can, can you hear me. This is Christopher yes. John. Yeah, I don't know why there's no picture, but I have an account, but I still I haven't quite figured out how to use it. 
Um, I'm, you know, it's just, I don't, it's the only social media account I have, but it, it still befuddles me a little bit sometimes. <laughs> um, well, I hope this has been helpful. <laughs> it has been somewhat helpful, although <laughs> um, I'm thinking about trying to, I don't know, Mark may be able to address this. I'm trying to uh, think about getting the IT guys to help me with it. Cause I, like, I don't have a picture. I'm, I'm, I'm basically retired and I'm looking for maybe something part-time, you know, so I'm, I'm in the other end of the spectrum here, you know? Um, but, uh, I, I, I really, uh, am not real big on technology, but I kind of have to be in, <laughs> yeah, right, these days. right now. You very much have to be, but yeah. If you, if you are a current UTC student or an alum, um, or you're signed up, you know, as a, an auditing student or anything like that, we can um, we can schedule you an appointment um, and like figure out a way to do it social distance where we can help you work through those tech issues and get you set up. All right, appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Just call the office. Um, we are over time, so I think we're gonna um, need to call it. Uh, great conversation. Uh, thanks so much, Lindsay. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, uh, Lindsay, you're welcome to stick around if you have the time. We're about to do a, a debrief session and any uh, of you attendees are welcome to as well. Um, just uh, go back to the main list um, at utc.edu slash mind the gap, uh, mind dash the dash gap and uh, click on that daily debrief. And we're all just going to regather in there and talk about what we learned today and uh, share some more knowledge. So um, yeah, thanks so much for a great session. We really appreciate it and, uh, all around. Really thanks good. guys. Thank and y'all connect with me on LinkedIn. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Have a great day.